let's read the space here. It works. It, it does work sometimes. I don't know what the science is. Okay. No, 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 it does. All right. So a deposit of number eight. A deposit of 75 at time zero will accumulate to X at time three. So under force of interest, X is the accumulated amount, right? So that's the amount. And uh, that the principal is 75. And E would be 0 to 3 delta T dt. Right? That's what happens in the force of interest. That amount is equal to principal e power zero to whenever, right? Agreed? Okay. So x is equal to 75 e power zero to three. Let's substitute the delta t. That's two over k plus two t. So now in the two over k plus two t, k is a constant. So what will be the integral of two over k plus two t? When you do the u substitution, you pick up the two with the derivative and with this two, and so it will just be ln of k plus two t. Okay. 75 e power ln k plus 2t. Well, strictly speaking, you know that the integral is the ln of absolute value. But I'm considering that uh, uh, the things involved are positive, uh, we can just write parentheses instead of the absolute value. So 75 e power ln k plus 6 minus ln k. Which two? Constant. No, but when you integrate, this two goes away. When you do u equals k plus 2t, the derivative makes the two go away. And another shortcut, which if you want to remember that, is that uh, the integral of a over k plus ax. That's just equal to ln k plus ax. Okay. So this will be, so now we will combine the two logs by the log difference property. So e power ln k plus six over k. Why did we combine these two logs? Just because I can, it doesn't mean that should. You can take out k plus six by k outside. Right, because I, I, I want to cancel this e and the ln. And the way I can cancel it is I have to have a single log term, right? That's why I wanted to write. So now the next step would be this is seven. Now the E and the L and cancel and I get 75 times K plus six over K. 
Okay, so that is what I get from the first. This is my equation number one x. Then on the left side, I had an x. Let's call this number one. And then on the right, uh, so now I use the second condition, the present value at time three of a deposit of 150 at time five is also X. So now this is what happened. This is what's happening. Um, the deposit comes at time five, 150 comes at five or 150 will come at time five. The present value of this at time three is X. So now you can read it like this. Um, so either, either way it's fine. You can, since this X is coming before and the 150 is its value later. So one way to say that the present value of 150 at time, which comes at time five, its present value at time three is X. Another way to say it is that if you do X at time three, then its future value at time five is 150. Isn't it the same thing? <clears throat> saying that the present value of this 150 at time five at time three is X is the same thing as saying that if you have X at time three, then its future value at time five is 150. Isn't it? You don't have any other deposits, right? No, nothing else. So, so let, let's think numbers so that you understand better. So let's say um, I, somebody says to you that at, in five years from now, they will give you um, $150. And you want to figure out what that value, what, what the present value of that would be at time three years. So you are going to get 150 five years from now, but you want to see its value three years from now. So let's say the three years from now, you figure out by using the interest and everything, you figure out three years from now, its value is going to be um, $120, right? So you are saying that the present value of a future 150 is $120. That's the same thing as saying that the future value of the present 120 is $150. So, so if you think this way, then three, uh, so then X is like the principal. 150 is the accumulated value. Uh, what happened here? Why did I get this big line? 150 is the accumulated value. X is the principal. What is this keep happening? Uh, e, uh, e power. Okay, tell me the bounds of integration. Three to five. Um, delta T dt. Okay, so let's see what becomes here. 150 is equal to X. So everything is the same. It's the same delta T. So it uh, would again integrate to, um, okay, now the bounds are different. Bounds are zero to three. So it'd be again, E power ln K plus two T. But now the bounds are three to five. So 150 is equal to X e power ln k plus 10. 
minus ln k plus 6. What would be the next step? Okay. Combine the logs. Ln k plus 10 over k plus 6. So 150 is equal to x times k plus 10 over k plus 6. Now we have the value of x. So it's, we have two equations in two unknowns, x and k. From equation one, we have the value of x. x was 75 times k plus 6 over k. Substitute x from 1 and 2. So 150. So what was it? 75 k plus 6 over k. So x is 75 k plus 6 over k. And then we have the k plus 10 over k plus 6. k plus 6 very conveniently cancels out. And then I can divide both sides by 75. So I get 2 is equal to k plus 10 over k. And I can multiply by k. So 2k is equal to k plus 10 k is equal to 10. So k is equal to 10, but they are asking us to find x. So you can do it from the first equation. So x is equal to what? What was it? 75 k plus 6 over k. Is equal to 75 10 plus 6 over 10. What is 16 times 75? 1200? The result is 120. What? What did we just find? We found x. X is what this 75 at time 0 will accumulate at time 3. The future value of the your current 75. Okay, so let's look at number nine. Jennifer deposits thousand into an account. The bank credits interest at a nominal rate of I compounded semi annually for the first seven years and a nominal rate of two I convertible quarterly for all years thereafter. Okay. The accumulated amount in the account after five years is X. The accumulated amount at the end of 10.5 years is 1980. Calculate X. Okay. So X is what you have after five years. Okay. So for the first seven years, you have I, so first seven years, you have a nominal rate I compounded semi annually.
semi annual. Now, what is the usual symbol for semi-annual compounding? It's not I. I is not the usual symbol. What's the usual symbol if it's semi-annual compounding? Right to the I to the superscript two, right? I superscript two because it's two compoundings a year. But they have every right to use a different symbol. Okay. So uh, the first benchmark is five years. The accumulated uh, value after five years is X. So after five years, the 1000 grows to X is equal to, so what will it be? X is the amount after five years. So the principal was a thousand. Thousand yeah. mm. yeah. one I, I by two, two. Mm. Yeah. power five two times two, two. two times five yeah. Yeah. times five. So I two by two two T right so x is equal to 1000 1 plus i by 2 power 10 all right let's call it equation one and now the next thing is that accumulated value at the end of 10.5 years is 1980. so uh, this semi-annual compounding is happening up to the first seven years. So we can say that after seven years, thousand grows to. So tell me, what will it grow to after seven years? Thousand. Thousand one plus two i. No, again, i by two. I by two. Fourteen. Fourteen. Right, be two times seven. I mean, the same thing. Here, here we did five years. Now, if I want to do seven years, it'll be two times seven. The only thing that I, I have a question is, so whenever you have, um, uh, I want to have a, a lady in my head, but uh, whenever you have, don't you have after seven years, it goes, it grows differently. Yeah, after so, seven. So up to the first. No. Oh, so it's not after seven years. Uh, uh, okay, up to seven years, right? Yeah. At seven, yeah. by seven years, right? But, okay, the word was wrong. Seven years. So by seven years, the thousand grows to this much, right? Now, now fine? Okay. But now after seven years, we start having an, uh, a nominal rate of 2i convertible quarterly. So after seven years, the rate is 2i quarterly. So now it's quarterly rate. So, uh, so how, how much time uh, do we have between seven years and 10.5 years? Three and a half years? No. There are 3.5 years between 7 and 10.5. So by 7 years, you have this much in your account. Yeah? So that's like the principal now at 7 years, and it's going to grow for another 3 and a half years. Isn't it? So by 10.5 years, we have, let's say by t is equal to 10.5, we have, um, so this is what you had at seven years and it's going to sit another three and a half years. This is my principal at seven years. 
and now make it make make this one grow another three and a half years through this rate to y quarterly so what should i multiply this with one plus, one plus two, I. two i by four. four because it's quarterly and four four times 3.5 right then we're repeatedly using the formula one plus i m by m power m t See, this is the formula we have been using again and again. A is equal to P one plus I M by M power M T. Where in this formula T is in years, M is the number of compoundings per year. So first it was two for the semi-annual, then for the quarterly it's four. <laughs> So that's why we have four times 3.5, it was 3.5 years. Okay, so let's see. And they say this grows at 10.5, the final amount is 1980. So you have 1000. I am. One thing at a time. So this will be I by two. What's four times 3.5, 14? So this is the amount and we know that this final amount is 1980. Okay, so this can be simplified. These two powers combine into a 28. Yeah? No, it's two I. But it was 2i by 4. That, that also became i by 2. 1980. All right. So, what will this equation help me find? I. So one plus i by this stupid thing doesn't even have an undo, does it? It has, but it doesn't work. Uh, one plus i by two. How did this one come? It's 1980. One plus i by two to the 28 is equal to 1.98 when I divide by 1000. And then you take the 28th root, then subtract one and multiply by two. What do we get? So it's a, that's how you get point out percentage. It doesn't matter. 4.939. Percent? Yeah. So in decimals? 4.94. No, 0 0.0494. Oh, yeah. 0 0.0494. Yeah. Okay. So I is 0 0.0494, and we have to find X. What was X? That was equation one from one. X was. One thousand one plus i by two power ten. Is equal to one thousand one plus point oh four nine four by two power ten equals. Point 
So the interesting thing is, although this is chapter 11, but we never really did any new theory for chapter 11. We already knew everything that we are using. Okay. Mm. So I think we can finish this here. Let's look at chapter 12. Here also, we are actually ready to do chapter 12. Okay, so let's look at number one. In return for payments of 5,000 at the end of three years and 4,000 at the end of nine years, an investor agrees to pay 1,500 immediately and to make an additional payment at the end of two years. Okay. So, find the additional payment if I superscript four is 0 0.08. All right. So, so basically this is telling you that you invest something and uh, you invest uh, 1500 immediately because an investor agrees to pay 1500 immediately. So 1500 immediately at time zero. Agrees to pay 1500 immediately and to make an additional payment at the end of two years. So at the end of two years, you make an additional payment, but you're not told what that is. So let's call that X. So these are the two payments that the investor makes and in return, the investor gets 5,000 at the end of three years. So, so let's mark this with the arrow going in the other direction and also gets uh, 4,000 at the end of nine years. So this is what the investor is giving, 1500 now and X in two years. And as a result, he gets 5,000 in three years and 4,000 in nine years. And we have to find X. So the way we do these problems is we collect everything at one time. And it's up to you what, which time you want to collect everything. Um, normally we collect everything at time zero. So we find the value of the receive, receiving payments at time zero. The time zero value. Or you can just basically make one equation and have everything at time zero and have the um, payments coming in on one side and the payments coming out on the other side. So at time at time zero, at time zero, uh, input is equal to output. In fact, it's not just equal at time zero, it's equal at any time. Let's say you like two better than zero. And then you can say at time two, input is equal to output. 
the but the thing is uh, then you will have to count differently when you if if you decide to make time 2 as your zero time <laughs> so zero is the most convenient one so we are calling this uh, 1500 and this x as the input right it doesn't matter which one you call input which one you call output as your as long as you're consistent that whatever he was investing we are calling that as input so what's the value of 1500 at time zero 1500 plus the other input is x at time two so what's the present value of x that's happening at time two X to the one plus i to the two. So isn't it just x new square? Because one over one plus i is new. Right? It'd be x over one plus i whole square. So basically x new square. Um is equal to output. So one output is 5,000. So 5,000 was happening at time three, its value at time zero will be 5,000 new cube. And then we'll have 4,000 new to the nine. And now this new is one over one plus i. So let's call this as equation number one. So new one over one plus I, where I is the annual effective rate, because we are account we are counting this in years, right? New square we put new square when something was happening at two years. It means the interest rate we are using is the annual rate, where so new is one over one plus I. We are not given i. We are given i superscript 4. But if we have i superscript 4, can I calculate i from there? How? Oh, what's the equation? What's the relationship? What's 1 plus i equal to? So we know. What's the relationship between i and i superscript 4? What 1 plus i equals? I superscript four by four power four, isn't it? And I think that's one of the things which you had to watch in the videos, right? So, so, so general relation is one plus I is equal to one plus I M by M power M. Okay. So I can calculate one plus I from here. So it would be one plus 0 0.08 by four power four. What do I get? Point zero eight two. So one plus I would be one point zero eight two. Oh, no. 1 plus i would be 1.0 2.076. 2.07? 1.02 power 4 is not going to turn into a 2. 1.082? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then i by itself. Would yeah. Be right. You can calculate i by itself, but since the reason why we are calculating this is so that we can find new and substitute in this equation and new is one over one plus i so let's just leave the one plus i and now take its reciprocal new is equal to one over one plus i is equal to one over 1.082 equals point thirteen. 12.13 the reciprocal of one over one point oh eight. Uh, 
Oh, okay. That's the point nine eight four or point nine two four. Point nine two four. Okay. So that's new. And we substitute in one, substitute in one. So new is point nine two four. So one will become fifteen hundred plus x times point nine two four square. equals 15, uh, okay, 4,000, 0.924 cube plus, no, 5,000, so 5,000, 0.924 cube plus 4,000, 0.924 to the ninth. Okay, can I get X from this equation? Everything is a number except the X. Very nice kind of algebraic equations. Oh, the mask should be properly worn. So what does X come out from here? I Done? Got, I got fifty one sixty one point nine three. Fifty one sixty two. Is that what we have? Yeah. Oh, you got fifty-one fifty-nine. Oh, okay, it's only three dollars off. And why is that? Yeah, point nine two four was a very generous rounding, so that's why. Okay. So that shows that we. Are already in good shape. Let's look at number 14. Parents of three children, ages one, three, and six, wish to set up a trust fund that will pay X to each child upon attainment of age 18 and why to each child upon 21. They will establish the trust fund with a single investment of Z. So basically they, are, they want to invest Z now so that uh, the, each child gets X when they reach 18 and each child gets Y when they reach age 21. Yeah, nice. 
So what will be the equation of value of Z? So now in a way, uh, this is an even more useful problem than, so, so you might think that the more useful problem would be that, okay, let's say I invest Z now, what, what should that Z be? So that by the age 18, each child gets 6,000 and by age 21, each child gets 8,000. That looks like a more practical problem, right? But uh, the way it is, is it's actually even more useful because um, now you can even, uh, you can leave it flexible that, okay, what do you want this X and Y to be? So you can play around with the X and Y once you have that kind of equation. Okay, so let's see. Mm. So we will play the same game like uh, we did in the previous one. We'll collect everything at time zero. So Z is the current value. So Z is the input. So at time zero, input is equal to output. So what's the input? Z. So what about the output? You um, want to do, do all at the same time or one children at the time and then add it and subtract it? No, the, ch the children will get, uh, everybody, each child will get when they turn 18 and then when they, then the child turns 21. So the streams are um, happening at different times. Right. So we'll, in fact, we'll have to calculate um, so let, let's first focus on the child who's age one. So the child who is age one now, how long will that child have to wait for the first payment? 17 years. 17 years, right? Because the child is going to get it when they turn 18. So the child is one now, so that child has to wait 17 years in order to get how much? X. X. So it means that if that X is happening 17 years from now, what is its present value? Isn't it X new 17? Right? What about the second child who is age three? How long does that child have to wait from now? 15 years and the, ch the child is going to get x again that value of that x now is x new 15 and the third child 12 years x new 12 okay so that's the uh, until now we have written the payments they get when they turn 18 now let's go to the 21 so the child who is one year old now, how long from now will they get that 21 year payment? 20 years, in 20 years. So that'd be Y new power 20. And then the second child who is three now has to wait 18 years to get the 21 year payment. So that'd be new 18. Y new 15. Is that what they have? Of that. Well, they, they uh, factor out X and Y, but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then. Well, that's true number 18 because that has discount in it and some of you are still a bit confused about the discount okay so number 18 says that a loan of 12 is to be repaid with payments of 10 at the end of three years and five at the end of six years. So 
you probably loaned 12 right now, right? So how do you want to call the loan as input or output? Input, okay. So 12 is what you get right now. And then you have to pay out 10 at the end of three years. So at the end of three years, you have to pay out 10. And then five at the end of six years. Pay out another five at the end of six years. And kind of makes sense because when you are paying loan, repaying loan, you are paying interest also. So if, if you got 12 now, you expect to pay overall more than the 12, right? So you're paying 10 in three years and five in six years. And so calculate the simple discount rate that is being charged. So again, the, uh, the strategy is the same, bring everything to time zero. So at time zero, I'm going to use the previous exercise equation, but new being simple instead of compound. Yeah. But that looks too complicated an equation to use, right? I think we're better off just working with the numbers here. Okay. So what's the value of this 12 at time zero? 12. Okay, output. So the first output is at time three and it's 10. So how do you bring this 10 back three years? Mu will be used if it's, um, if we were using uh, interest, uh, compound interest, annual compound. But this time, not only it's not compound interest, it's simple and it's discount. So what's the equation if you have a discount? That's, that's right. The general equation in case of discount is A is equal to P times one minus DT. Uh, P over one minus DT. What's happening here? This is retarded. I mean, as soon as I drew this box, it starts moving when I put my hand over there. P over one minus DT, isn't it? Well, what do you think it should be, Tom? You don't seem happy with P over one minus dt, what, 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 what do you have in mind? What should it be? P times one minus dt? No, that can't be because you know that A has to be bigger than the P. So, okay, remember, they, they interest and discount always go opposites in every way. So, in, in case of simple interest, what do you have? P times one plus IT, we agree with that or no? Yeah. That's for the simple interest. And if it's discount, then instead of one plus IT, it will be one minus DT. And instead of being multiplied, it will be divided. So average both go opposite. The addition changes to subtraction, multiplication changes to division. So if you just remember that, then if you know the interest version of it, you can easily construct the discount version of it. Okay. Kristen, I was so happy to see you like uh, nod that you, uh, as if you understood something. But at the same time, you were looking at your phone. So I don't know what you were nodding at. So I hope you were nodding at what I was saying and not what you read on the phone. Okay, good. So, so now uh, it would be so uh, once we know that, let's just rewrite this again. So input we know is 12.
So the 10 that happens at time three will be 10 over one minus. Mm, three, do they give us the D? No, that's what we have to find. Calculate the simple discount that is being charged. So one minus three D plus, what about the other payment? Five happens at time six. So five over one minus six D. So how do we solve this for D? Looks a very simple equation at first sight, but actually it will turn out into a quadratic equation. How, what's the simplest way of doing it? Multiply by the common denominator. The common denominator is one minus three D times one minus 60. is equal to 10 times one minus 60 plus five times one minus 3D. Is that what will happen? When I multiply both sides by one minus 3D times one minus 60, okay? So I get 12 and let's foil this out. One minus 60 minus 3D would be minus 9D plus 18d squared, 10 minus 60d, plus five minus 15d. Okay, so 12 minus 108d, what's 18 times 12? 16? Fifteen minus seventy five D. So two sixteen D square minus uh, it's a minus hundred and eight plus seventy five. So minus thirty three D plus twelve minus fifteen to minus three. Is that it? And I can divide it out by three to simplify it a bit. So 72 D square minus 11 D minus one is equal to zero. And now quadratic formula, unless it factors, does it factor? I think it does. No, no. You don't? No. <laughs> okay, so let's see. <laughs> but do you remember the quadratic formula? That's good, actually, because quadratic formula is always going to work, whereas factoring just works in very exotic cases. So plus minus B squared, B11 squared, plus four times 72 over two times 72. So are both the values uh, positive? No, one of them will be negative, right? So what's the positive value for D?
Got it? 21.68%. Seems a very higher than usual discount rate. So let's check the answer. It's a 5% there. We're close, it's rounding up. That's the... Five percent. But so is there something wrong in the calculation? I think, I think um, the equation. Can, can we revise the? No, he's saying the equation is fine, and you still get five percent, or no? No. The equation. No. So okay. So let's see what's wrong. Twelve is equal to ten over one minus three d plus five over one minus six d. Right? Nothing wrong in that. Okay, then 12 times 1 minus 3D, 1 minus 16 is equal to 10 times 1 minus 60 plus 5 times 1 minus 3D. Yeah, nothing wrong in that. Okay, 1 minus 60 minus 1 minus 9D plus 6 times 3 is 18D squared. Yeah, here I distribute 10 minus 60D plus 5 minus 15D. Nothing wrong in that. 10 plus 5 is 15 minus where, 6. Where, where do you get the 9D? Sorry. Which nine? So 12 parentheses, one minus 90 plus. Yeah, so one times negative 60 is negative 60, and negative 3D times one is negative 3D. Yeah. So 12 minus 180 plus 12 times 18 is 216. Nothing wrong in that. This is negative 60 minus 15 is negative 75. So 216D squared. This is minus 33D, this is minus three, nothing wrong in that. Where's the mistake? I don't see any mistake. Well, which which point oh six? Like instead of doing eleven plus all that, I did eleven minus and it got point oh six. Eleven. No, but if you do 11 minus all this, that should be a negative number. So. Um, where is the mistake? Um, it's negative 11. Right. 72 minus 11. So that should be negative 11 in the equation, right? No, it's negative B. So negative negative 11 is 11. Oh, yeah, that was negative point oh six. Right, right. This is very strange. 121 plus 288. Because if there had been a mistake in the, in the back of the book, I would have made a note. Because I've been doing this problem for three, this is the third year I'm doing it. So there is something which we are not catching. Okay, what did you say the answer is? Five. Huh? Five percent. Exactly five percent? Yeah. Okay, there's a very easy way to check. Five percent discount. Plug it in the equation. Let's see. So, 
with a 5% discount, the 10 becomes 10 over one minus uh, three times 0 0.05, right? And the five, uh, 10 at the end of three years and five at the end of six years. So five would be five over one minus six times 0 0.05. This should equal, what should it equal? 12. 12. Tell me if it equals 12 or not. Oh, oh. I see the equation was wrong. Oh my God, no, 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 no. Look here, look here, look here. A is equal to P over one minus DT, that's fine. But this is, and, and this is the equation to find the future value. We are bringing them to present value. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's why you, you in the beginning said A times one minus DT. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh. and not only, okay, getting wrong answer, yeah, we now know the problem, but you know what? By turning it into this one, so actually it should have been 10 times one minus 3D because here from yeah. this equation, the present value, the P will be A times one minus DT. And we are bringing it to present, isn't it? Those two were happening in future like here and here, and we were bringing them to present. So the present value would be one minus dt. So the saddest thing here is that it would have been much easier and it wasn't this complicated of an equation. So 12 is equal to 10 minus 10 times one minus 3d. So this all is wrong. So 12 is equal to 10 times one minus 3d plus five times one minus 16. Look at this equation now compared to what we did. That's what I'm gonna say that. So would you please find the present value at times zero? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, what I wrote as the equation was correct. I was just using it incorrectly, yeah? Using the A form of it rather than the P. And nobody said a word during that time. Oh, what? It's .05. Yeah. So D comes out to be 0.05. So the previous work was kind of an example there that um, there's a quotation that sometimes evil people work harder to reach hell than good people work to reach heaven. So the heaven was very easy work here. And we worked much harder to reach hell <laughs> earlier on. Okay, so let's see. So I think we have taken care of chapter 12 also. Let's look at chapter 13. Again, there I don't see anything new in chapter 13. Ideally, it should be 1 to 14. So let's hope that by Monday we also cover 14. Oh, we are doing it now. We're going at an electric pace right now. But they're all the same, isn't it? The ideas are so repetitive. Okay, well, as you see, I've, we've been doing these problems without learning any new theory. And do you feel as if it's new concepts? No, it's the same old concepts. Okay, so let's look at 13.1 just to make you feel good that we already know chapter 13 also. Number one. <clears throat> 
find the nominal rate of interest convertible semi-annually at which the accumulated value of 1,000 at the end of 15 years is 3,000. So I think one challenge is to understand what it's saying. So what's happening? Tell me in simple terms. What's the investment and what's happening? Thousand, thousand is the investment. Accumulated value is 3000. Time is 15 years. And what do we have to find? I Convertible semi-annually, right? Yeah. So I superscript two is what we have to find. So what's the equation that involves I superscript two? A. Three thousand equal thousand plus. So basically, A is equal to P times one plus I two by two. Power. Two times two times T. Yeah, two T. So A is 3,000, B is 1,000, 1 plus I 2 by 2, our 2 times 15 is 30. So we first divide by 1,000, so we get 3 equals 1 plus by 2 by 2 power 30. And what do we get eventually for I2? Let's take the 30th root and subtract 1 and then multiply by 2. Point oh seven four six looks a familiar number. Seven point four six percent. Yeah. Okay, four. Why do I have a feeling that we've done this number four before? Do you remember a problem where new to the end was given? No, you don't? Okay, I think David can receive one of the following two payments. I think we've done this. Is Wasn't exactly the same. Different numbers, but like same idea. Everything else. Okay, David can receive one of the following two payment streams, 100 at time zero, 200 at time n, 300 at time 2n. Or he can get 600 at time 10. At an annual effective rate i, the present value of the two streams are equal. So second stream looks easier. So what's the present value of second stream? Wouldn't be 600. Um, divided by 1 plus i power 10. OK. So now what about the first stream? So there's a hundred at time zero. So it's present value is hundred plus 
and then you have 200 at time n. So what, what is its current value? 200 new to the n, yeah? And then the 300 happens at time 2n, so 300 new to the 2n. And then they tell us that the two streams are equal. The present values are equal. So we have 100. So basically this is equal to 600 over one plus i to the 10. And then what's the next step to substitute the value of new to the n? I think this was exactly the same problem. 100 plus 200 and new to the n is 0.75941 plus 300, 0 0.75941 square, 600 over one plus i to the 10. Now, do you recall that we did this? Yeah, they give you the, yeah. And then everything is known except I. But anyhow, if even if we did it, but you have no memory of it, it's good that we do it again, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I have pretty high hopes that we will be able to finish until chapter 14. That would be ideal start. Because from chapter 15, a new world will start. Instead of being there being one or two payments, there'll be a series of payments happening at regular intervals. And we be I'm not ready. You're not? I've never heard you ever say that you're ready for something new. I'm never ready. <laughs>